Yeah, so that Rosa one, that issue, we actually had eight different covers of this issue. Number seven had eight covers. I think there's another one. Is that Vera? That's Vera. That's our Spanish. So we changed the logo every issue until we were playing. And I, I always try to do dumb stuff, like stuff that works against being on newsstands. Like we put this logo at the bottom. Up to now. And it doesn't work. When you see it on a newsstand, it just looks like there's like a little blue. They like when it get, if there's something in front of it, you can't tell anything about what it is. Rosa is a school teacher now? Yeah. See, like there's, that was the same issue. That's the better cover of Pearl. Yeah. Paula Diaz. Oh, yeah, yeah, there we go. There's the, the Bernie Bible. Bernie Bible's right there. That was an office meltdown, I guess. Uh, <laughs> nobody was... wanted to shoot it. Nobody wanted to print it. People yeah. were freaking out. Turns out, lighting a pile of Bibles stolen from hotel rooms across the country doesn't get a lot of people excited <laughs> to participate. Basically, uh, Hulu approached me to do the Big Brother dog, asked me if uh, we'd be interested in doing a documentary. And I thought that was a great idea, and I knew I couldn't direct a story about Big Brother, so I'm a huge Epic Later fan, and so I, he was the natural first call we made, and he was into it. I didn't even realize he was, he was a Big Brother fan. I had no idea. I'm yeah, sure. I had the first issue <clears throat> through pretty much all of them. I mean, I, I didn't even need to... I mean, I reread a lot doing this, but I haven't memorized, you know, from... Yeah, was, from oddly, he was a fan, but, and I was a fan of Epically Late. I, I love those. And I would say Big Brother, reading Big Brother was an influence on my skate show because I liked the uh, telling the stories of skaters. It seemed like a lot of the magazines... And I love Thrasher, and I like Transworld. Transworld was more about the photography. Thrasher was more... I, I don't know what it was about, but the... Um, Big Brother, it really was storytelling. It was like... Some of the, especially some of the road trip issues were like a novel, like something you would read. Well, and also we, we were, Big Brother, I was always attracted to the, the big personalities. I didn't care so much about who's the best skater. Like I like the guys who had the most personality. With our limited distribution, those are the guys that naturally gave to us. The rotten personalities are the ones that I liked and that's, that's what Big Brother became about, you know. So that's something I've carried with me to my show or even knowing at Thrasher, like Michael Burnett and the two articles they did at Thrasher. I mean, they were, they were, and we'll all admit it, were directly influenced by Big Brother and Sean Cliver and Mark McKee, kind of, you know, put, trying to put our own spin on it, but I, I think they set the template for how to do a tour. And then for my show, it was like how to make a moving version of something we were influenced by. So I was really influenced by it. My, my early influence for when I started my show was I really liked uh, Louis Thoreau did like weird weekends on BBC and he does these documentaries and I liked Werner Herzog like weird I mean there's the famous Werner Herzog but I used to just rent them and um, and, and the, I'd say those kind of documentaries and, and behind the music's a little bit but I always kind of avoided some of the cliches in there like even though I always even every episode there's a sad part I try not to have really sad music over the sad part or so I don't know. I would say, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's funny because like the, my favorite, my favorite all-time documentary is a movie called Vernon, Florida, by Errol Morris. And the, the docs I've done, I have zero. It, like he has a distinct style. Let's shots play really long, and like we don't do any of that. But, but that is my all-time favorite documentary. So uh, and it has influenced me, maybe, but not the way I shoot. No one ever punched you. No one ever punched me. Uh, Sean Sheffy beat up Sean uh, Cliver, but uh, and right in front of me. But right, I, because people thought because the because it's something I wrote. Yeah, yeah, and I watched. I never even he knew. didn't get beat up, but he, he, Sheffy smushed Cliver's head into the desk, and it looked like he was about to kill him. And I was doing nothing to save Sean because I never even and knew I wrote what he was mad about. Yeah, I never even knew what you looked like. <laughs> Everyone else, I knew who they were, what they looked like. You could have passed me on the street, I would have no idea. You kept yourself... I change my look all the time. <laughs> That's true. Do I know about Disneyland Jail? They have, there's a jail in Disneyland. 
Really? Yeah. So you didn't find the bar, but you found the jail? Found the jail. Because Lance Conklin got thrown in jail, and I got thrown in jail helping Lance Conklin in that s sequence where he jumps off the monorail into the submarine boat, which is now the uh, Finding Nemo ride, but it wasn't the Finding Nemo ride back then. So There is a bar. You say there's not a bar. There there, is a bar. I think there's a it's bar. Club 33. There's, right. They, there's legend of this bar, but I don't think... The, the real bar, it costs like $100,000 to be a member. Oh, yeah. And there's like a 20, like a 15-year waiting list. Is it in Pirates of the Caribbean? Yeah, it's above it. Uh, I mean, we were trying want, to find it, but... They wouldn't have let you in. You would have bu buzzed, and they just would have... But I, was, I sat in Disney jail for like five hours, and, uh, <laughs> and it's not what you'd think. It wasn't fun. Like, hey, I'm in jail. Like, it's just a cage in an office. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, I think we relied on advertising and as skateboarding, skateboarding tends to go up and down, you you understand it, like, uh, and when it's down, it's hard to support four magazines, like, like we, we used to be the third magazine, and then there was the four, you know, by the time it died, there were three, it was the sixth skateboard magazine, and that's a lot of mouths to feed in a small industry, you know. Especially when it's consolidating and Nike, you know, we weren't getting the Nike money. We weren't getting any of the. We were only getting the startup little tiny company money, and uh, so I don't know. I feel like it's hard. It's, it's complicated. But what killed Big Brother? You know, <laughs> like I think I hope the next version of Big Brother comes up soon. Like not Big Brother per se, but the the next uncensored, crazier, you know, just... A lot of that stuff kind of exists online. There's a lot of yeah. websites and um, even message boards and stuff that I feel like get out that need, that scratch that itch that Big right. Brother scratched. Back then, yeah, there was no internet. There was no... It was the only place where, you know, there were articles kind of bagging on pro skaters sometimes. And, or, and now I feel like that stuff pops up in message boards where someone's like, like... That information is a little more accessible, whereas that was the only glimpse into what it was like to be a pro skater. You know, so I'm in Ohio reading it like, wow, that's what that those people are like. Is a Goofy Boy is not in there, right? <laughs> I think the picture of Goofy Boy is the there. picture it is. Yeah. Good morning. Yeah. There's just like little little things that sometimes are a Joey Boy. Joey Boy or like me and Cossack fighting, like like they're Yeah. Like, that was some of the most epic. <laughs> like, with Cossack, I broke Cossack's glasses six times uh, by punching him in the face or throwing him into a wall or him throwing me into a wall. Like, but most of it isn't. Like, the, the few that are documented aren't getting it right. Like, there wasn't the one epic. <laughs> yeah. I learned a lot about Cossack on so, this journey. Um, no, no I, I don't. I wouldn't say I have any regrets. The, the, I have plenty of stories, but I don't have any regrets. It's felt something that should be in there. I think we had enough time in post to figure out what the real story is, and I think Patrick did a good job of navigating it and getting it right. So I, I, I think it's it's where it needs to be. This is a landmine. <laughs> It's a loaded question. Um, well, like back in the old Max Fish days in the, the early and mid 90s, uh, it was a lot dirtier down there, a lot more fun. But I don't know, it's still pretty cool. I mean, I had a great time last night. I love the vibe of that bar. They just got the best mix of people, you know? It just, I don't know, it still seems pretty cool to me. So. Well, I think it's funny because I look back and I think it was cooler then. But I know that when I was partying and moved here, there was a whole group of people that thought it was lame and it was cooler. Right, in the that's 80s. the problem. Like, and, and I come, when I come here now, I'm a 50 year old man with two old kids. I'm in a different world, like you know, so, and I'm fucking rich. I mean, we were just 